We're on the corner of Whitney and Trumbull Street, which is also affectionately known as the Glam and Cheese Corner, because as you can see, we've got the Hive Studio here, we've got Casey's Cheese here, and of course, there's no more glamorous place in New Haven than fashion to be in Uh So we've been in this location. How are you doing? We've been in this location for about eight years. Before that, we had a place on Church Street. All in all, we've been in business, uh, officially or unofficially in some way, about 13 years. And we actually started out, we started life as a tag sale. We were only supposed to do this for one weekend. And look what happened. It just took on a life of its own. So, uh, we've been, so we, our, our, I can't remember our official numbers, but we started out just doing this once in a while in Nancy's apartment. And then we, decided it took over our lives, so we decided to keep going. So, um, one thing about fashion is that the name is a little misguided, a little, a little misleading, because when we named this store, the name was kind of a joke. It was called Fashionista Tag Sale, because no real fashionista would shop at a tag sale. So, but we kind of just got stuck with the name. So. When it comes to what you think of as a fashionista, we're really not that. We're really more artists than anything. So we love the art of dressing, we love vintage, uh, but as far as somebody who follows labels and follows seasons and is chasing after you know, what Gucci's doing, etc., and cares about labels, that's not us at all. So once in a while we get people who mistake us for that sort of store. We're not that sort of store. So you wanna take a look at our window? Every, every few months we change this one. And this one, as you can see, says love and laundry in the air. And every one of these windows, there's always going to be the beat-up man. Here's the beat-up man in this one. He tends to look like somebody in politics that you might recognize. And uh, everything else, we always have messages of love and understanding. This one is the only thing that should be separated by color. Is laundry. So, um, on this side is what we call our girly window. We tend to have women's fashions, women's design fashions. Hi, how are you? Are you, uh, what are you, excuse me one second. Can I help you? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, just as that guy was talking about, he's going to a 70s party. We do a ton of costuming here at Fashion East. We do decades parties, a lot of them. I can show you some of our flapper stuff, which is a lot of fun. But in addition to that, we do rentals. It really sets us apart from a lot of other places. We'll rent almost anything in the whole store. So if it's something like, let's say that you are going to an event and uh, the theme is pink, or you're in the mood for pink, you're thinking pink, you can rent this dress from us. You can keep it for a couple of nights, a couple of days, however long you need it. And maybe with that pink fluffy hat up there too. And then you bring it back to us. And we really believe that it's a, it's a sin to have something that sits in your closet 364 days a year. And this is also what we call catch and release shopping. It's just like you're going fishing. You pick up the fish, oh, you take a picture, you throw it back. And this is what we do, catch and release shopping here. Of course, you can buy almost everything, but if it's part of our costume collection, you can only rent it. So that's that story. So come on in. Several years ago, I'm gonna say four, New Haven lost its last walkable thrift shop. There used to be a Salvation Army on Crown Street. And once that went out of business, there isn't one you can walk to. Therefore, we started the Fashion East to Thrift Rack. So this is, sometimes it's, it's um, vintage stuff that needs repair, but for the most part, it's stuff that sort of trickles its way to us that's very usable clothing that you need for your day-to-day. -day. It's the same similar kind of things that you would find at a thrift shop. And as you can see, everything on the thrift shop is going between $2 and $12. Mm -hmm. So that's our way of you know, providing that when people need a thrift shop, we have this for them. It's a big mess right now, but this is our free table. We always have free stuff on the free table. And people come in sometimes every day. Mm -hmm. uh, and it can be, it's sometimes the stuff we bring ourselves in from home, sometimes thing people, things people drop off. It's a cool thing to have. So. Yeah. And I'm gonna give you a little tour. This is our greeter mannequin. Women's accessories. 
a lot of sparkly stuff in here. We do a lot of masks, as you can see. There is uh, accessories. These are some of our flapper headpieces. Like I said, we do, we do a lot of rental. So we have dresses and headpieces and gloves and beads and boas and shoes, all of which can be rented for your flapper and Gatsby Barbies. We've been doing that for years. We keep waiting for the trend to die out, and it hasn't. Okay, we have <coughs> very entertaining, very entertaining dressing rooms. Our swimsuits are really they're very rare. You know, something like this, they're basically not, they're not, almost not existent in the market anymore because of sun and sand and chlorine, and they deteriorate. So we're always really happy to see something like that. Not everyone's happy to see these guys, but... We have thoughts about vintage fur. So here's what we call the Tunnel of Love, Underwear Alley. And then here, we have the Hall of the Animal Spirits. So this is where we have men's and women's underwear and shoes. Um, I'm going to give you a little spiel about fur. Um, there are people who don't believe in or anti-fur. We are an anti-modern fur. We don't support the contemporary fur industry. But most of our furs have been dead longer than I've been alive. So our philosophy is to honor the spirit of the animal that died all those years ago, at least let it be beautiful, at least keep somebody warm. The other thing that's really important when you're talking about outerwear is right now, we all have to start thinking about dust to dust because what we're wearing now, our puffy coats, etc., they usually stay in the environment at a minimum of, they start usually de uh, decomposing or biodegrading at about 80 years. There are certain things like artificial down filling, like people say, oh, I'm so vegan, I can't even wear real down in my, in my puffy coat. That stuff never biodegrades. It's going to be with us forever and ever and ever. So it's terrible for the environment. And if you look at our little thing, we try and educate our people. You know, nylon, for instance, is a petroleum byproduct. Mm -hmm. So the nice thing about wool and fur, vintage, of course, cotton, leather, and suede is that they return to the earth, unlike a lot of the other things we wear. So for that reason, we are pro-fur, pro-vintage fur, pro fur mm -hmm. and also wools. And if since on the topic of wool, if you're interested, what's the best kind of wool you can wear? Camel because camels are water savers, they're gentle on the earth, and they molt. You don't even have to go eh, their fur falls out. It gets washed and turned into fiber and it's beautiful and luxurious and warm. So, um, this is our, right now we have some really very cool cowboy boots in here. Um, right now we're, we're, we're processing an incredible, incredible intake of 1970s women's platform shoes, which are very rare. You can't find these on the market, very rare. They all came from the same woman who was uh, somebody who really liked her footwear. She was fancy. In the world of who was plain and who was fancy, she was fancy, my friend. This is a fancy lady. So. Um, do you think you could tell us the story behind the shoe with the fish in it? The shoes and the fish, yeah. Those are costumes, they're not genuine, mm -hmm. but they were a fad in the 1970s that men would wear to discos. There was mostly men, I guess some women did too, but it was generally known that this was a, a male thing. And they, they you know, the live, t the live goldfish in the heel of the shoe was sort of the height of the disco era. These are costumes, the reproductions, and they, these became, we have, two, we have a pair of black also. Um, these got popular a second time because there was a movie in the 1980s about a 1970s pimp who gets out of jail and when he goes against the stuff out of the locker, he has all these like pimp outfits with the cape and everything else and the cane and the giant hat and he goes for his shoes and the fish are dead. It was a g sight gag. So that's sort of why people know more about it is because of that movie rather than the actual wearing of them itself. But people rent these, they're, they're not for sale, they're part of our costume co collection and um, they go and they win prizes. They win the party. And then we take them back and clean them up and put them back out again. These could use another cleaning. So let's check on Nancy. Let's see how we're doing. And I might have to, I might want to take over for her. So we have a guy in here right now who's getting dressed up for a 70s party. Mm -hmm. Let's see how we're doing with that. 
So why don't you stop for a minute and we'll see how Nancy's doing. 